What's going on, Clitz? What? What up, what up, what up? It's your boy, Dup. It's your boy, Ross. And we in the clutch, baby. Hey. Back to you, ladies and gentlemen, with another bitch of the day. You feel me? Appreciate y'all for clapping with me. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, yeah, for sure, for sure. We're going to check in out. This mug, like we never left. Of Pimp My Ride was fake. Here's the evidence. Now, for those who don't know, it was a classic show back in the day. It was. Back in our time. It's crazy saying it like that. Uh, called Pimp My Ride, where people would have just the most craziest, you're not sure how this car is even working type cars, and mm -hmm. then they would pimp them out. But as we found out years later, a lot of times they made the car damn near worse <laughs> than yeah. you know yeah. when they originally worked on it. That's just kind of what it was. It was to make it seem like it was a much better vehicle. They would put unnecessary stuff that would make the car damn near not functional. And people yeah. didn't know that until many years later. So we're going to check. I feel some way out. about this because I watched that show religiously. And yeah, I used, yeah, to, think, yeah. I used yeah. to think everything they was doing was so legit and live. So to come to find this out, well, when I found out, I was just like, ah, man, yep. really? Yeah. You know, it, but Exhibit did all, do this thing on there, even though he didn't do nothing. Ruse. It was all a ruse. So yeah, let's get yeah, right yeah. into the shenanigans, man. It's not my house. It's a staged house. And the contestants' mm -hmm. houses Damn. weren't the only thing Pimp My Ride lied about. The house the reactions was were staged and retaped. You didn't know that? Not, I didn't know the houses, too. Yeah, those houses, they were in. Those weren't their houses. <laughs> what the hell? <laughs> our our. Our childhood was a lie. It was, bro. <laughs> Not even the houses. Times, certain upgrades were taken off as soon as the cameras cut. It's wow. For a boat. He goes, it's a GPS for waterways. It will not work in your car. And disappointingly, even Exhibit himself had no real interest in cars. Soccer moms coming up to me, telling me about their husband and their car that he had since the 60s. And I was like, stop talking to me about this. I know as much as you do. When asked if the show was Damn. fake, a former contestant replied with a single word correct, which isn't surprising as the show even lied about who the contestants were. For example, in season two, episode 10, wow. Brooke was introduced as a 22 year old film lover working hard to go to grad school, which had been fabricated by the producers Jeez. as she was actually a 25 year old cocktail waitress planning to move back to New York. The reason for this, as explained by Jake from season three, was because Pim My Ride only picked people in their early 20s. There was a strict age limit mm. of 22 years old. Confirming that the show was lying about contestants' details before filming had even started. In the first 30 seconds of each episode, Exhibit emphasizes that each contestant doesn't know they're about to get picked. He has no idea. I'm about to pimp his ride. Yet this was strange as the contestant always answered the door, always had a microphone on them, and even had their windows blacked. No, I ain't even gonna hold you. I said that when I was a kid, but yeah. I just still wanted to believe. It's just like the whole Santa thing. Like, you just, you just want to believe. Yeah. Ah... Uh... Yeah, man. Uh, it's it's one of those type of things where it was just there to sell the image of this person not knowing and they're about to get their car fixed. And it's a great moment when the house they're in, fake. Their details, <laughs> fake. fake. Uh, their reaction, damn near fake. Because they already have a microphone and everything. Yeah, they up. already set up and plugged yeah. in. Yeah. Bro, tell yeah. us someone, yeah, we're going to install this in your car when the camera's on just to say, nah, we taking that shit back kind of wild bro that's kind of fucked up that's fucked up bro out as if they didn't want cameras seeing inside well it turns out brooke the yeah, supposed 22 year old film lover had been pre-selected by a friend to appear on the show uh, and as a result she'd state when exhibit showed up at my house to tell me i'd been chosen not a surprise what was a surprise was when the producers made me react and react and then react again to exhibit showing up finally coercing me into doing a cartwheel and she wasn't the only contestant who'd had this experience and they push you on how to say it and wait what that's her and everything like that. The show didn't Wait, go back. Oh, her? I don't know if that's her. That may be somebody else. I'm I'm assuming. Oh, experience. Oh. And they push you on how to say it. And I don't know. She got a snake in her in her hand. Yeah, I'm good. I don't know if that's her. But why have a snake in that clip though? Like someone said she ate the car. Okay, right, though. Bro. 
We're on to the next video. What to I say mean, and everything like that. The show didn't have an actual script, but they did steer the dialogue in a direction that they wanted. If I said something they liked, they would have me repeat it over and over on camera. This had been commented by Seth, who appeared in season five, who was also well aware that Exhibit was coming to his house, stating, They told me I was in the running for my own episode, but it was between me and two other people. When I was sitting in the house waiting for a knock at the door, they said that it was either going to be Exhibit or a producer telling me I didn't win. Thinking That's back on that was all bullshit, but it did natural. make the surprise genuine, which was the same experience as Erin from season four, episode two. She was one of three contestants. One of them would be chosen. Someone came and knocked at the door. If it was Exhibit, they won. Each contestant was at least somewhat aware that they'd be getting a knock on the gotcha. door because, well, the homes they were in were actually owned by Pimp My Ride. A Huffington Post article clarified these houses These niggas had oh just houses God, set up for them to wait to, you know, if Exhibit does hit them up. Damn! Sit in this staged house until we let y'all know if y'all actually won or not. That's wild. That's crazy, bro. Yeah, all I the, took the house over the payment. <laughs> over the, the you know, to sell the image of, man, Exhibit doing some nice things for the people. They say that's, <laughs> that's Wong. Oh were oftentimes not the contestants' homes. Instead, each dwelling had been rented by MTV. For example, when Jake from season three was asked, did the film crew show up and stage the whole surprise as part of the episode? He'd respond by stating, it wasn't my house. It was a place owned by one of the crew members. Damn. Similarly, Seth from season five stated, the house was rented from Craigslist because I lived in an apartment and they need a house with a big open driveway for filming, which is certainly reasonable. Although sometimes the house was part of the person's story. In season two, for example, Right. Eric's car had supposedly been beat up in the rough streets of Compton. In Compton, ain't no street lights in Compton. <laughs> However, judging from a quick look at Google Maps, it seems the episode was filmed in a much nicer neighborhood. Oh, so uh, if Eric they weren't filming that shit in no Compton. Yeah, you knew better. Hey, hey, get them TVs from cameras from around yeah. here. Man, they'll take exhibit and everybody on set and give me all this shit. Yeah. You coming with me, you gonna pimp my ride. This is jack hood. my ride. Yeah, facts. <laughs> Eric's story was inconsistent and Brooke's story from earlier was downright fabricated. Then who else's stories were exaggerated for the sake of the show? Well, it seems pretty much all of them. In season three, Jake's Buick had been bought from his grandma who smoked. And as a result, the show threw an extra few dozen cigarette butts in the car to make her just look like a totally what? disgusting person. Wow. On top of this, the show interviewed Jake's girlfriend toward the start of the episode, yet MTV apparently questioned me having a girlfriend and suggested I dump her because it was better for my desperate dude with a shit car image. Dawg, that's some effed up stuff, bro. I hope he ain't do that. Ass this thing hey, is... bro, dump old girl, man. We need oh. you to look desperate and lonely. <laughs> in, in one episode, I want you to ruin what could potentially be your life just for one oh. episode. Bye. Bro, that's and we not even really pimping your car. And once again, all for our entertainment. <laughs> a producer later responded by stating, why would we want a kid to break up with his girlfriend? How would that have helped the show? So while Jake's claim about his girlfriend was somewhat questionable, the cigarette story was confirmed by Seth, who had a similar experience. I know I'm fat, oh, but they went the extra mile to make me look extra fat by telling the world that I kept candy all over my seat and floor just in case I got hungry. <laughs> Hey, they had candy bars all laid around. Laffy Taffy's and nah, later. Oh. That's kind of messed up, man. He said, I know I'm fat, but, but they damn. went the extra miles. Nigga Let say, me nah. sprinkle some candies in here. Hold on. It's not enough candies on the dashboard. Bro. We need some in the glove compartment. And those were brand new rappers, weren't they? Yeah. <laughs> those Damn, like brand new that's... brand new pieces of candy bro somebody bought a party size bag and just threw them in his damn truck that's, that's it that yeah. however it seems the faker story was Justin's in season 6 his front bumper had supposedly fallen off in a car crash here is a result of a 3 car pile of right here although according to a 2010 tweet my friend Justin was on Pimp My Ride on TV he said his RAV4 was involved in a 3 car crash no it wasn't dude beat his car up with a bat the same user then clarified what snitch. he told me was that MTV suggested to him that he and his friend should do more damage to the car which was confirmed by Justin himself 
himself who'd add, yes, they removed my front bumper, used aircraft remover, and enhanced the dent on the side of my car. Damn. Whilst introducing the episode, Justin stated, One of my crazy ex-girlfriends actually threw nail polish on my hood. Although when he was asked, why are all your ex-girlfriends so angry? Justin revealed it was just something I made up, while Erin from season four was also encouraged to make her car look bad. They asked to leave trash in the car. We went to in and out and so they told me to leave it in the cup holder, so I did. It seems the only real part of the show's intro was Exhibit's improvised dialogue. Because it wasn't scripted. Mm -hmm. I could say whatever I want to say. And when Exhibit drove the car to the shop. Exhibit did actually take the cars and drive them away, with the exception of a few that were too broken down. And then they made it look like <laughs> Yeah, <laughs> nigga would have got stuck. <laughs> hey man, cut this camera off, man. Hey, hey man. <laughs> wanna come tow this over there? Oh, that's wild, man. That's crazy, Doug. You know, you got to beat up your own car some more so they can sell the image of it just being messed up and make up crazy stories. Like, yeah, that's my ex-girlfriend, she just went crazy. Nail on polish. Car. Of all things, she ain't throwing no nail polish. She ain't gonna mess up, she ain't gonna mess up her stuff. <laughs> like he did. Although this segment created even more problems. Most people believe that PMR takes the car and gives it back in like a week or something. That's what I thought was going to happen too. But in actuality, they took my car for roughly seven months, Whoa! being a massive inconvenience for some of the show's contestants. And they make it yeah. look like they're- Seven Jeez. months? Yeah, I thought they did this in like at least a couple weeks. Yeah. Damn. So he got you too. Now you, now you in disbelief. Ah, uh, I ain't know it was like a fucking hell no, nah, bro. A majority of the year, your car is gone, and then you hell take, in, nah, bro. Then you take Give me shit my off. Damn car. Seven months. Give me my damn car. I need to go to work. <laughs> the fuck, y'all gonna comp? I'm sure they didn't compensate them. So. Of course not. Got some. They're moving really, really seven fast, up points, but in reality. They weren't. When asked for the five months they had your car, did they supply you with a replacement car? Justin from season six replied, no, they gave me $2,000 to rent a car. But I was 19 at the time. I rented a 2000. car for a month and it cost me $1,000, forcing Justin to find his own transport wow. for the remaining four months. Seth from season five had a similar experience, being forced to go to a really small shady company off the freeway by LAX because they were the only ones willing to rent to me because of my age. Mm. It sucked having that rental car because they wouldn't take payments over the phone so once a month i had to drive all the way from west covina to lax just for That's them to swipe my card although the rental situation was better for other contestants they had my car for about six months and that time i had the rental car for six months as well with jake from season three adding they gave me a really nice mitsubishi lancer to drive for the time they had the buick in the meantime the crew began to yeah so they just pick and choose who gonna get a rental and who not right. on them that's cold that Damn. is wild, bro. Damn. This, this, I feel like I, we was robbed. Yeah, well, they were robbed. I can never watch this again. Like They were they were definitely robbed. And these bro. niggas came to the meeting table like they was really finna quickly hurry up and put this shit together. Nah, bro, they had fucking seven months to, hey, man, take your time. <laughs> damn. Bro, you, can, you can build a damn house within that time period. Facts plan how the rides were going to be pimped although according Great. to a former production staffer this was also somewhat staged the boardroom scenes with the wcc crew took a long time to shoot they often had to be fed line by line some of those guys never really got used to being on tv <laughs> some of the lines in the shop probably seem rehearsed because producers would come up with them and feed them to the wcc guys although excluding this the mechanics were fairly innocent the segment where they'd pimp the car was almost impossible to fake they really did shit. put shit in the vehicles and change everything out. But when contestants were shown what their new car looked like, Pimp My Ride employed even more staging. Finally uh -oh. came the day for the big reveal. They filmed my reaction to the car at least 10 times before Damn. I'd even seen it. That's and when I wild. did, holy hell, poor Betsy looked like Barbie's dream car from hell. It was pimped in the nines and hideous. This oh. had been written by Brooke, who hey. gave a much different reaction to cool. oh, That's they... what I always wanted to know is like, because some of them colors and schemes was kind of out of there. Wow. And I always so, wonder what they felt like for real, for real. So some of them were faking it before they even saw the car, only yeah. to see the car and be like, the fuck is this? <laughs> but they've already recorded you 10 times saying it's so amazing. You can't you can't lie now. Now you gotta oh, run with it. Oh damn, that's that's cold, bro. These niggas 
these niggas ain't on MTV. They were diabolical. Okay. So if they be lying like that, what else can people do? Exactly. Exactly. While every other contestant also filmed their reveal multiple different times. We had to take a lot of takes over and over and over and over and over and over again. Justin stated they had to keep retaking my reaction. Seth stated I even had to do the reveal of the car like three times. However, Jake's reaction anecdote was the strangest of them all. His first real reaction to the car was just quiet amazement where he said this is good. They immediately yelled redo and then things got a bit weirder. I remember this very clearly. Big Dane, very big dude. He like puts his arm around my shoulder, kind of walks me around the shop for like 10 minutes and he's like, listen, we put a lot of work into this. We expect you to be a little more enthusiastic. Although it would have been hard to conjure enthusiasm for a car that barely worked. As Jake would later uh. write, the problem with the show is they don't fix any of the mechanical issues and my car was a piece of shit. What they did was make my piece of shit sound exceptionally awesome, which is great, just not great enough to drive on roads. That the HuffPost article expanded wild. They, they threaten this nigga, man. Hey, hey, hey. When, yeah, no. someone put their armor on your shoulder. And walk and you around for 10 minutes? Let's, let's talk, bro. Hey, man, we put a lot of time <laughs> in these six months to make your vehicle what it is today. So put a little mm to your reaction, okay? Or we gonna put a little mm to you with some of these <laughs> <laughs> these fucking tools we have in this damn garage, okay? Appreciate uh, Yeah, nah, they- Damn. Damn, dog. You threatening the kid, man? Bro. And the car was, didn't even work. And the crazy thing is, this was like prime MTV, bro. Yeah. This, this was, was prime uh, MTV, This was bro. when they was doing Next and, and mm -hmm. all them shows. Yeah, this was like, people were watching, this is back in the time where people actually was watching like MTV a yeah. lot. And I'm just TV in general. On this by stating the car needed a muffler and so a fake exhaust pipe was installed to make it seem as if that's what the car oh, was supposed to sound like it. even though it was just a lack of a muffler well exhibit brought up a much more dangerous incident there was an instance where one of the cars wasn't fixed correctly and long story short this kid was driving this vehicle that was supposed to be like damn near brand new and the steering wheel came off when he was driving it it's therefore no surprise that the production staff has said i can say that the cars often weren't fully ready when we shot the reveal some had to stay in the shop another week or so to get finished before the kids got them back especially if they had mechanical issues nah, bro, you, bro got... you can kill somebody man man hell no nah, bro hey that's when you call a lawyer you yeah. get somebody you, you sue these motherfuckers bro you can't be driving around and la -di -da -da -poop. i don't think that's supposed to poof like bro like hell no nah, man why are you nah. pimping your wings in heaven that's cold, bro. You went from <laughs> pimping my ride to pimping my wings in heaven, bro. Nah, I'm just have to be a ghost now here. I got some unsettled business to attend. All y'all fucking steering wheels is just gonna pop off randomly. On your car. Oh no! What On y'all cars. Yeah. That shit is nah, wild. man. That's that's fucked up, bro. And it was Seth and his candy bars who seemed to fit this category. Pimp my ride doubled down on his supposedly crappy diet by installing a. Put a actual cotton candy. I think I remember this episode too, bro. That's what practice. Like I said, they would do stupid shit like that. That has no practical use other than we can put it in a car. Yeah. And that's it. That's. He clearly don't need that. And you was really trying to be funny. That's... And you took the time to create this. <laughs> that's so. <laughs> that's fucked up, bro. A cotton candy machine in the boot of the car, which didn't even work as the cotton candy machine didn't have a protective hood that fit. So if I tried turning it on, it would get candy strands everywhere. Very messy, so I never used it again after the shoot. Seth also never used the LED lights installed in the seats as they would get really hot if left on. <laughs> oh, yes, of course they would. And <laughs> this nigga got some makeshift seat warmers. Bro, look at that. Got some, he got some makeshift seat warmers, bro. That's yeah, that's it. That's it. Cause that's like a grill, bro. 
Oh my god, bro. While he also had to remove the gold wing doors because the pistons used to lift them kept them from putting seatbelts in the back, which was highly dangerous. To add a cherry on top of the cake, he had to fork out a further $1,700 for a brand new engine, then adding, after that I drove it for a month before someone hit me and totaled it. However, the end to Justin's RAV4 was even more brutal. After five years of taking his pimped out ride to car shows, Justin's RAV4 caught on fire whilst driving as a result of Whoa. faulty wires. It was later confirmed that this had nothing to do with the show, and at least Justin's car was wasn't. the same one he first sent in, as when Tavarish uploaded a video titled, I bought an abandoned pit. I have actually seen this video. That, like, uh, which one? Yeah, this, this one? I bought an abandoned yeah, Mm -hmm. I've actually seen this video. They actually bought one of the vans that was actually on the show. It was at, it's crazy how the internet works nowadays. He actually was able to find it by, and I think they fixed it up and actually fixed on the car, like was working on it. That's, That's wild. And actually did what they were supposed to do to the car. Yes. <laughs> Cause he owns a shop. So I was like, bro, and obviously you see how many a million yeah got for sure bro that's, that's a crazy thing to buy a uh, abandoned pimp my ride vehicle and actually pimping it and fixing it <laughs> that's like insane. it's supposed to be <laughs> Hit my ride minivan, he'd make a shocking discovery. The show originally introduced the minivan as a 1998 Plymouth Grand Voyager. Oh, yeah. However, Tavarish discovered the car was now a 1999 Dodge Caravan, showing that after they wrecked the original minivan, the show sneakily pimped a completely different car. Mm. As a result, Exhibit has been the brunt of most of the show's backlash. I was the face of the show, you yeah. know what I'm saying? So people associate me with what happened to the car. Which feels pretty unfair given every contestant has said he's an awesome guy. Guy. Yeah. In fact, Exhibit only did pimp my ride for the following reason. I actually did pimp my ride because I thought they was going to play my music videos. However, it instead <laughs> seemed to have the opposite effect. Simple. The show was taking away my credibility of wow. what I'd already done. It was taking so much time. I wasn't able to tour. I wasn't able to record albums. Oh, damn. I definitely didn't know. I, I was, that. you know, I was there filming, 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 filming. Which is even more depressing given he was barely paid for it. But at that particular time, you wasn't really happy with the pay though. Nah. <laughs> Hell no, and as a bro. result, it's no surprise that Pimp My Ride is unlikely to make a comeback. Hell we no. Get a Pimp My Ride? Hell no, no, there'll be no more Pimp My Ride. Hell no. What the hell? Man, he's this nigga some had been on crooks. The they weren't even paying him? Ah, oh, hell no, nah, bro. They some crooks, bro. Uh, MTV. I mean, but it makes sense. These these television networks, yeah. they don't give a damn about that. All they care about is people watching the shows. They don't give a damn about paying people the way they should be paid. I didn't know he wasn't getting paid like that. Not you know? having a, not missing out on tours and stuff. You would think that would be thrown in there like, man, I'm not able to work. So y'all gonna have to compensate me. I mean, yeah, and man. someone said that's his fault to an extent, but we know that was bringing him a lot of eyes because yeah. everyone knew pin my ride was associate associated with exhibit so that actually was kind of helping exposure them the exposure wise because this is before like the internet was you know what it is now so yeah. people a lot of people were watching that show and they knew exactly who he was mm -hmm. so but at the same time you should still be getting compensated Fuck that yeah or some lawyers should be looking at them contracts and agreements i mean yeah. hopefully they had it wasn't for so many years but hey i'm flabbergasted you know i already knew it was a lot <laughs> and i knew some of this stuff already but i ain't know yeah. the to the detail of how many effed up scenarios they left people in like you made people have to go rent a car and then they had to go to this certain spot if they wasn't mm -hmm. old enough and y'all just pretty much left people hanging for the duration yeah. of their car getting fixed and even after that yeah I don't know what to think. Let us know what y'all think in the comments down below. Chat, they've been letting us know what's going on. Sue my ride. <laughs> yeah, sue my ride. That's yeah, that's it. exactly what it is. But if y'all enjoyed it, y'all already know what to do. You too. Make sure you run up the likes. Subscribe. Let us know what else we need to be checking out. Keep on supporting us. Oh. Spreading love. Be in love. We catch you in the next one. Peace out. Already. This bitch is from Houston. If you got a problem, then we got the solutions. And there's no illusion. I made this shit happen. I'm living life lucid. I'm switching my strategies. Now they hate on me because I'm causing casualties. But why are they after me? Deep inside, they know they can't handle half of me.